This video is going to tell you everything you need to know before you go to Morocco, including food, safety, what to wear, SIM cards, everything. So stay tuned, I've got 16 things you need to know. Amelia and myself spent over three weeks traveling through Morocco, going to many parts all over the country. We absolutely loved Morocco, but there are things you have to watch out for. If you are interested in any of my other videos on Morocco, then I'll leave them in description. I've got some really good videos, so go check them out. Let's start with number one of 16. Try not to use the organized tours. So when you get to Marrakesh or Fez, there are lots of organized tours where you can just go on a big trip with lots of other people and just go to different spots. However, one, these are expensive and two, you don't really immerse yourself fully into the culture. We actually went there on the bus, a CTM bus. We got to stay in the desert for four days rather than just for like literally like 12 hours like you would on a big group tour. However, group tours are good if you've got a limited amount of time in the country. Number two, dealing with scammers. Now, I've not been to anywhere where the scammers are actually this bad before. I haven't been to India, I haven't been to Egypt, so there might be places which are worse, but I found them quite bad and very persistent. Maybe that's because of COVID-19 and so there's been less tourists, but they would literally follow you sometimes for quite a while. I think we've probably had one guy follow us for like five or 10 minutes once. They can be quite amusing at first, but how do you deal with them? We found the best way was to either completely ignore them or pretend you spoke like another language, which sounds crazy, but we sometimes said oh, we're Russian. Russia. Maybe we'll just try and find some other tourists to scam. Number three, is it safe in Morocco? We honestly found it so safe walking the streets. Even at night, we didn't find any problems. We didn't feel under threat or anything. So honestly, I think Morocco is a really safe place. Honestly, there's gonna be parts of every city which are more dangerous. The only thing which can be a little bit intimidating is when these hustlers come up to you and won't stop. And if I was by myself or if I was a solo female, um, this could be quite daunting because you don't want that attention. You just want to go to where you want to go. Um, so that could make me feel maybe a little bit unsafe if I wasn't with someone. Now let's move on to number four and that is what to wear a big one. So as you may be aware, Morocco is a predominantly a Muslim country and therefore most people are quite covered in what they wear, especially females. This means I always think it's best to respect the culture and religion and to not wear too much revealing clothes. But once you get to more touristy places like Marrakesh, um, the, tour like the local people are a lot more used to seeing more skin. However, I still think it's probably best to cover up it can get very hot, so sometimes covering up can be very uncomfortable. As a guy, I did wear shorts and a t-shirt. Um, I didn't ever wear any vests because I thought that was a bit much, but shorts and a t-shirt, and honestly, you probably will get more looks, especially as a girl if you're wearing less, but if it's really hot, then it might just be worth it. Number five, where to eat. Now please, wherever you go, wherever you travel, always eat the local food. Eat the street food, because that is the best stuff. That's where the locals eat. Don't just eat at a Western restaurant or McDonald's. I know they're the golden arches, but please, please just eat the local food, the street food, it is so good. If you're going to Marrakesh, eat in the night market, as it's quite cheap food. Something you've got to do, eat the tagines, the kefta, and um, the couscous, which they normally have on Fridays, as that is amazing. And also, you will have a lot of fresh mint tea. We had fresh mint tea at least once, maybe twice a day, because honestly, the Moroccans love it, and I love it too. They just have so much sugar in it that be careful of your teeth, make, make sure you brush them. Now, number six, let's move on to a SIM card. Wherever I travel to, I always try and get a local SIM because then I've got data and calls and texts everywhere. And it is just so useful look, for looking up where you're going, especially with all the scammers around trying to lead you off into crazy different places and making you pay. Um, so yeah, all you have to do, ask the host, hostel owner or the hotel owner and they will probably get you one or you can just go to a little shop and, and they'll probably have like a Vodafone or a little sign saying they sell SIM cards. So just get one from there. The data was actually really cheap. I think it cost us five pounds for like 10 gigs, which is really good. Okay, moving on to number seven. Here, you've got to make sure you've got a lot of cash because they only use card very, very basically only the Western restaurants. I think I used my card twice in the whole trip 
Um, obviously, I took the money out of ATMs. Okay, number eight. If you are going to buy something from the local markets, in the souks, in the Medina, then you need to learn to haggle. You've got to haggle as it's not, they don't get offended, it's just how they deal with life. It's literally the culture. So learn to haggle. There's probably some YouTube videos on how to haggle and stuff, but honestly, in Marrakesh and Fez, they will inflate prices. Honestly, you're always gonna pay a bit more, which I think is only fair. Um, a little bit more than the local price, but it's always gonna be cheaper than getting it at home. Number nine is still kind of to do with haggling is make sure you know the price of the taxi before you get in. Now around town, a taxi should cost no more than 30 dirhams. But honestly, we got asked to pay like 100 or even 200 sometimes, and they will just inflate the prices so that they can make some quick money. Never pay over 30 dirhams and make sure you know the price before you get in the taxi and haggle. One time in Marrakesh, we got a five minute taxi and it cost us 70 dirham. We got the same taxi back the next day and it cost us 20 dirham. So there's the price difference. Another thing to note that on Fridays, it is holy day. So a lot of people, a lot of the shops won't be open and it might be quite difficult to eat. Especially if you're traveling in Ramadan, then good luck because I don't think a lot of things open then. Number 11, one thing which really did surprise me is how little English is actually spoken, especially in less tourist places. In Marrakesh, you're fine with English, but in Rabat, we literally didn't really find anyone who spoke English. And so we had to go back to our 16 year old GCSE French, and that was a little bit of a struggle. So maybe brush on up on your French and it's just something to note because we weren't expecting that. Okay, for the last five tips, there are gonna be really quick, quick fire tips just to knock them off. So number 12, make sure you've got a European plug socket adapter if you're from the UK or the US or whatever. And number 13, make sure you ask before you take a picture. Um, honest, I'm a photographer and I've not been to somewhere where they are quite reservative in like taking pictures so just ask number 14 mosques are off limits for any non-muslims so don't even try um, don't bring your drone because it's not going to get in the, in the country it will just get confiscated okay number 16 the very last tip is visas if you're from an English speaking country or you're from Europe, excluding South Africa and Australia, then you don't need a visa. You will most likely get a 90 day free visa, but just check on the UK, on the, not UK, on the lo your local government website and it should tell you. Guys, I hope that was useful. If you've got any questions about traveling Morocco, please send me a DM on Instagram or leave them in the comments down below and I will get back to you. Um, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next place, I think I'm going to Egypt. So yeah, see you there.